Hi, welcome to No Water River. I'm Renee Latulip, and I am here with Lee Bennett Hopkins for a new series called The History of American Children's Poets of the 20th Century. Uh, for a little background, this series is going to focus on a chronology of American poets for children from 1920 to 1999. Prior to 1920, most poetry for children came from abroad and works by poets like Lewis Carroll, Edward Lear, uh, Robert Louis Stevenson, and Christina Rossetti were those who were taught in the schools. Uh, it wasn't until 1920 that an American poet for children was actually published in the United States. And in this segment, we are going to be discussing uh, poets of the 1920s. So I'd like to welcome, uh, once again, to No Water River, Lee Bennett Hopkins. Hi, Lee. How are you doing? Hi, Renee. I'm excited to get ready uh, to get going on this series. So I'm going to hand it over to you and the 1920s. Yeah, I'm excited to do this, too, uh, because I've done years of research, and this has never been done. So I think we're breaking ground on the history of po American poetry. Uh, in the 1900s. Uh, we can start with 1920 with uh, Hilda Conkling. Uh, Conkling was actually a child poet phenomenon uh, who composed works between the ages of four and ten years old. Rather remarkable. But she never wrote anything down. Uh, instead, her mother wrote everything down as she Talked, the, talked through her poems. A first book, though, that was published was Poems by a Little Girl, which appeared in 1920. Her second and last, Shoes of the Wind, in 1922. Uh, and then in um, Silverhorn was published, called The Hilda Conkling Book for Other Children, in 1924, with illustrations by Dorothy Lathrop, which is quite interesting, who received the first Caldecott Medal in 1938 for Animals of the Bible by Helen Dean Fisher. Uh, after her mother stopped recording her daughter's words, she is not known to have written anything further. A very curious uh, uh, jaunt into poetry <laughs> in, the, um, in the 1920s. Uh, essays galore appear about the mother-daughter relationship. Um, there are many, many uh, research articles, and a lot of Conkling's work can be found on several internet searches, uh, including the entire text of Poems by a Little Girl, which is public domain. Okay, we jump to 1922. Uh, a poet, Elizabeth Maddox Roberts. Maddox was, uh, Roberts was born in Springfield, Kentucky, a former elementary teacher. Uh, she came to fame via her adult novels, two of which were nominated for the Pulitzer Prize. At the age of 41, she published Under the Tree, containing 52 poems reflecting rural themes a cornfield, cows, the local church, and its parishioners. Uh, by today's standards, her work is quite dated, again 1922, and few of her poems appear in any current anthology. Let's go to two years later, 1924, Rachel Lyman Field. She was born in New York City, and her first work appeared in St. Nicholas Magazine when she was 16 years old. Uh, she went on to write in all genres, adult novels, plays, books for children. Hitty, her first 100 years, received the Newbery Award in 1930. In 1944, her book, Prayer for a Child, received the Caldecott Award for Elizabeth Orton Jones illustrations. So here was a woman who really conquered the children's literature scene uh, early in the, in the early 20s. She also wrote a book that became a film, All This in Heaven Too, which starred Betty Davis 
and Charles Boyer, <laughs> uh, which of course was adopted from one of her novels. And she also translated uh, the lyrics of Franz Schubert's Ave Maria for Walt Disney's film Fantasia. So this woman was truly into many aspects of the art. Fields was a pioneer in writing about cities. Uh, skyscrapers, one of her poems, remains as fresh as if it were written today. I thought it'd be nice if you shared it. And I will. Uh, actually, Lee sent me this poem the other day, and I find it absolutely charming and timeless. So again, we're talking about Rachel Lyman Field here. And this is her poem, Skyscrapers. Do skyscrapers ever grow tired of holding themselves up high? Do they ever shiver on frosty nights with their tops against the sky? Do they feel lonely sometimes because they have grown so tall? Do they ever wish they could lie right down and never get up at all? Simple, charming. It's a lovely children's poem. And again, it could have been written yesterday, I mean, yeah. to describe the city. Uh, another very popular poem uh, remains, again, as fresh as ever, uh, and many people will know, Something Told the Wild Geese. Something told the wild geese it was time to go. Though the fields lay golden, something whispered, snow. Leaves were green and stirring, berries luster lost, but beneath warm feathers something cautioned, frost. All the sagging orchards steamed with amber spice, but each wild breast stiffened at remembered ice. Something told the wild geese it was time to fly. Summer sun was on their wings, winter in their cry. Again, beautiful language. Perfect rhyme, um, truly a remarkable poet. That is lovely. Uh, the following year, Dorothy Aldous came on the scene. Her work has remained popular throughout the entire century. Uh, Everything and Anything was her first book of poems, published in 1925, as I mentioned. Uh, here is a woman well, we finally get uh, someone who taps on childhood in all of its growing stages. Uh, this is something, you know, they wrote about cornfields, as I said, in church and nature. She did the child. Uh, consider this poem, see, I can do it. See, I can do it all myself with my own little brush. The toothpaste foams inside my mouth. The faucet waters rush. In and out and underneath and round and round and round. First I do my upstairs teeth. Then I do my down. The part I like the best of it is at the end though, when I spit. Again, charming. Uh, or the simply whimsical uh, self-concept expressed in her short poem, Everybody Says. Everybody says, I look just like my mother. Everybody says, I'm the image of Aunt B. Everybody says, my nose is like my father's. But I want to look like me. Altogether, A Child's Treasury of Verse, which is indeed a treasury, uh, features 144 poems from her very, from her very books, uh, which was collected in 1952. Um, on to 1927, James S. Tippett. Uh, here we go with one of the first male poets. Uh, Tippett was born in Memphis, Missouri, was a high school teacher who remained in education uh, his entire life. 
Uh, his first book of poetry, I Live in the City, came out in 1927. Uh, his work contains simple rhythmic, rhythmic patterns painting positive images of city life, taxi cabs, apartment houses, again, building a, sky, a skyscraper. Uh, in 1973, Crickety Cricket, the best loved poems of James S. Tippett, contains 52 uh, verses uh, of this work. Again, perhaps it was among the first poem to highlight a subway. He writes the poem, Underground Rumbling. At times when we're walking along the street, there comes a shivering under our feet and a hollow, roaring, rumbling sound seems to come tumbling out of the ground. We've heard it again and again and again, so of course we know it's a subway train. Very interesting work. Uh, on to 1928, Mary Britton Miller. Uh, Menagerie was published in 1928. Uh, a sampling from the book is Cat, which you're going to share. I am. <laughs> uh, another lovely moment, a slice of life poem here. Uh, Mary Britton Miller, Cat. The black cat yawns, opens her jaws, stretches her legs and shows her claws. Then she gets up and stands on four long stiff legs and yawns some more. She shows her sharp teeth, she stretches her lip, her slice of a tongue turns up at the tip. Lifting herself on her delicate toes, she arches her back as high as it goes. She lets herself down with particular care and pads away with her tail in the air. So just lovely. a description, you know, but she's got every single detail in there. It's just lovely. Again, it's poetry. Uh, her life, I found, was fascinating. It was fraught with difficulty. Uh, her father was a very wealthy lawyer. She had an identical uh, twin sister, Grace. Both her mother and father died within an hour of each other when the twins were only four years old. Her twin sister, Grace, drowned at the age of 14. Uh, looking up some of her work in biography, she stated, life was blotted out for me. Everything became dim, unreal, artificial. Well, you can imagine. Yeah. Uh, she went on, however, to produce five books between the ages of 63 and 97 pardon me, 87, uh, including stark adult novels under the pseudonym Isabel Bolton, all dictated in her Greenwich Village apartment because she was going blind. Uh, again, extraordinary lives. And that sums up poetry in the 1920s. Um, our next episode will take us to the 30s with some summer stars, dreams, a bunch of cats, and more. Great. Thank you so much, Lee. Um, and you can find in the blog post below this video uh, some of the representative poems that Lee and I read during this episode and the beginnings of the timeline of um, children's poets of uh, the 20th century in the United States. So once again, thank you, Lee, and we will see you back here for the 1930s. Looking forward. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thanks.